So, um, in case you haven't heard, uh, shit's going down in Wall Street. Uh, and if, you know, there's these huge uh, protests, the, uh, the Occupy Wall Street protests, and it, now it's spreading to other cities. I know that start, the protests are starting up in my city um, in this, this coming week. Uh, so, uh, if you haven't heard about this, the reason is probably because, you know, the media is hardly covering it. Um, I mean, even, uh, even Rachel Maddow, who is always complaining about how the, how liberals don't get covered in the media, in the media you know, somehow she's not picking up on this. And I, I think, think I did see a, a, uh, thing on, uh, Lawrence O'Donnell did a little, little bit on that. So this, it started, it is starting to get some coverage, but I mean, this thing's been going on for, for well over a week now. And, uh, the, over the weekend there were, uh, 80 arrests and some people got maced, you know, for, uh, when they weren't doing anything. So it's just getting real. Um, and uh, I, I, it seems like it, it's sort of an appropriate timing for me because I just finished reading a book called The Fourth Turning uh, by William Strauss and Neil Howe. Um, I, I, I made a previous video about this once. Basically, the general idea is that is that there's a cycle in history of four turnings um, that uh, that repeat itself over what's called a, sec a seculum. A seculum is basically, it could be 80 to 100 years, but it's basically it's approximately the length of a human lifetime. So, uh, and, you know, the seculum starts with what's called a high. It's basically a time of you know, renewed prosperity, strong institutions, weak individualism, which is followed by a second turning called an awakening where uh, there is a questioning of cultural values and uh, you know, a, a new sense of, of renewed individualism and um, spread of new ideas. Often there's a religious awakening, but, but also you know, awakening in philosophy and just um, new ideas disseminate through uh, society. Um, and then there's an unraveling where uh, individualism continues to be strengthened while, while institutions weaken and uh, basically becomes a sort of time of cashing in on the prosperity from the high. And then it eventually leads to a fourth turning, which is a crisis, um, which is where we're at right now. Now, I mean, crises can happen at any point in, in this seculum, but what makes a, but the thing about uh, these these turnings is it's not just the events, it's the events plus the generations that meet those events. Um, and so that's why we have like four um, generational archetypes for the generations that come of age during these events. The generation that comes of age during a high is called an artist generation. This was, you know, the, uh, the most recent high was um, the the post-war era, the, the 1950s and early 1960s, basically from the end of World War II until the Kennedy assassination. Um, and the generation that came of age during that time, you know, it was, you know, it was Dobie Gillis, it was just all, all these, um, you know, straight-laced, very, you know, obedient kids who, I mean, of course, the ones who also, you know, listened to Elvis Presley and, you know, they obviously they had their fun, but it, but it wasn't, they weren't, uh, you know, they, they were for the most part pretty well behaved. You know, and then uh, in the 60s, and uh, they had the awakening which was with what's called the consciousness revolution. You know, the 60s and 70s, it was a huge time of cultural upheaval, um, people starting to question the values they raised in, everything. Then, um, and the generation that comes of age during an awakening is called a prophet generation. Then we had the unraveling in the 80s and 90s, uh, and uh, this is what this is a period when I call the culture wars. And the generation that comes of age uh, during the unraveling, which um, we know we uh, in this current cycle we call them Generation X, um, they're what's called nomad generation. They're rugged individualists, very pragmatic, very kind. Of, very much kind of just not trusting the institutions and just trying to get ahead for themselves. And then the generation that comes of age during a fourth turn, during a crisis, is called a hero generation. This is the current, 
and the current hero generation is called are called millennials. The last hero generation was the GI generation. It came of age during World War II and the Great Depression. So, uh, what 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 you get with a crisis is a generational lineup where you have the profit generation entering old age. You know, the boomers are starting to retire now, and you have uh, the nomads entering midlife. You know, and and you know a lot of the Xers are in their 40s and even starting to go in their 50s now. So yeah, that's I think Obama turned 50 not too long ago. Um, and uh, you know then you have uh, the the hero generation entering young adulthood. Um, now I'm among the earliest cohort of millennials. I was born in 1982, which uh, that's kind of that's basically kind of the cutoff point for the millennials. But um, yeah, so there's younger millennials who were born in the 90s and you know come of age later in the crisis, but. Um, but yeah, that, that's basically the generation, generation lineup, and I see these Wall Street protests as basically embodying the uh, fourth turning mood. Because um, what happens during a, during a crisis is the crisis is never, uh, you know, the issues in the crisis are never new. It's uh, it's always something that's just been building up for a long, long time, and people think that, oh, we'll deal with that problem later, or, you know, or it's not going to, or, or, you know, we'll, um, you know, it'll, or we, we can push that one down the road, and eventually the, the problems become, uh, you know, so, so prominent that it has, it has to be dealt with, and, and the Civil War is a good example, you know, for, for generations before that, there were all these compromisers who tried to, Work out some sort of am amicable solution. Yeah, the, the Missouri Compromise, the Compromise of 1850, or you know, and but eventually slavery became an issue that couldn't wait anymore, and we had a crisis, and um, and they faced, the nation faced the crisis, and uh, it didn't turn out. It, it could have turned out a lot better, and, and, that, and that's actually the thing. But uh, the, the Civil War is almost kind of hiccup in the system because it, it came too early for a hero generation to develop, and so it was fought by a nomad generation. The Revolutionary War was fought by a hero generation. That was Thomas Jefferson's generation, Mid James Madison, Alexander Hamilton. Um, they were a hero generation. And so uh, that's the generational land we've got right now. We got, uh, And I, I think these Wall Street protests are just the beginning. You understand the, the fourth turning crisis um, isn't just a couple of years usually, and that's actually another thing about the Civil War. Is it's the exception because it was it was only about five years. Uh, a, a generational crisis, you know, a, a fourth turning crisis. It lasts about a generation. It tends to be about uh, fifteen to twenty years, and I think that is what we're looking at right here. We're this uh, fourth turning crisis is going to be a while. We're, um, and during a crisis, the old order breaks down. And 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 if it's and if it's successful, then a new one comes into being. So things that didn't seem possible before can you know suddenly become inevitable. And so yeah, you know, that's why I think there was some. I, I think I heard that you know in in, in Chinese the letter for the character for uh, crisis is the same one for opportunity. You know that's uh, that, that crisis is opportunity, and so. During this crisis, we have a, an opportunity to reimagine the world as we know it, and um, so, so that's why I, I think that this uh, these Wall Street protests will, even if these specific protests fizzle out, there'll be new ones. There, there's a it's it's the beginning of a general upheaval, and uh, I I think we will. Uh, be able to help create a new world. So uh, I I plan on attending the protests in my city uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, I I won't be camped out there because I have still have a job. But um, but I want to express my solidarity with the protesters, 
and say long live the revolution. Peace.